Everybody, Luke McElroy from Mess Performance Society. Welcome back to another episode of the Physiology Secrets Podcast. Joined today with Nick and Tyler. Uh, We're going to do a bit of a follow-up podcast on the swimming one we just released. Uh, And and just specifically talking about the use of paddles. Tyler, you've been at the pool a little bit. What are you seeing? Is the common Paddles. (laughs) Paddles, their favourite one. Yeah, lots of paddles for what appear to be a long time and what appear to not be really using them with any real effect from from what I can see in a lot of cases. So I guess there's a bit of background. We have previously done a podcast on paddles mm-hmm. and sort of our philosophy on it is that it, 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 all training needs to have a specific purpose. Uh, and, and the best use for paddles, uh, in our opinion, is obviously for, for, for intervals. You know, 100 metres is probably the top end for it. Like it really needs to be a, a strength set. And if you're going to be doing paddles for 2Ks, you, know, you, you, you won't be producing any more power output than if you're just using your hands. You're just going to be yeah. reducing your, your your, your stroke rate, um, trying to get a bit more push on the water. But um, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's going to be the same. It's going to be very similar power output, if you think about it, over the course of a 2K well, effort. It, well, yeah. Are you going faster? Yeah, I mean, well, you're exactly yeah, right. Yeah. If you're not going faster, you're not putting out any more power. You're just swimming a different way. And yeah, if you're either shortening your strokes, slowing your strokes down, or changing what's happening under the water, which would be your worst case scenario in in changing your hand position a little bit so that paddle can slide through the water a little bit easier than having all that resistance, which that would be your worst case scenario if that starts to creep in. Yeah, if you start to cheat and get your, get your technique obviously suboptimal. It's kind of like you're going out for a, say you go out for a, a one or two hour bike ride, but you just jam the gears down and you're holding 50 or 60 yeah, RPM. You're like not going any, your hair apples no higher. Yeah, it's, it's like just, the big gear stuff that we talked about a few weeks ago where it's it's like, yeah, it's not, you could you can make it up a number of different ways, but we're just changing, you adding more resistance than just dropping the, the cadence component. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's beneficial from a strength perspective, but then it's like, particularly when we start talking about now we're doing it in a pool on the bike, it's easier because you can't really change what you're doing from a technique perspective. It's more just, well, we can really kind of focus in on that strength adaptation. In the pool, like you said, as soon as that hand slips, now we've got a completely different, I guess, stimulus from what the session was going to provide. And is it then better, more beneficial just to not use the paddles in that circumstance? If you are going to start slipping through the water, are you going to get more of a strength stimulus by having your hand in a proper position? Then you can worry about using paddles later. And I think that's the key. I think, I said on the bike, it's harder to cheat the system. Yes, you mm. can rock left and left right a little bit, but... Uh, in the pool, it's easy. You just turn your hand to reduce yeah. the surface yeah. area that's touching the water, and it's significantly easier. So, um, so I guess as a recap of our philosophy on it, anyway, paddles have a, are a useful tool for particularly for building strength. But when we're talking about building strength, we're talking about 25, 50, maybe 100 meter repeats with a fair recovery, as opposed to doing 2k continuously. But I, I guess the, the the analogy I'd like to, to go through now is like well. For most people, uh, I imagine that they haven't really used their arms, particularly a pulling motion, yeah. which is exactly what you're time. doing in swimming, in, in a very long time, in three months plus. Uh, I guess the best example I can give you is, is just um, thinking of Eliza, my wife, who did an ACL. She was on crutches for four months, and the size of her quad is about a third of what it was before yeah. that. Uh, if I were to say, look, if you, did, if, you, if you were bedridden for four months and didn't use your legs, you're not going to go instantly out and start running for an hour, you're going to do your, your strengthening work, your rehab, that sort of stuff. Now, it, it, obviously, that's an extreme circumstance. Like for most people, um, you're still walking around for th- three months. If you don't run, that's fine. You're still walking around using the same mm-hmm. muscle groups. But when you're talking about swimming, it's very rare, I think, that you actually use those muscle groups day to day, unless you've got a, a Unless your gyms are closed, so you can't go to the gym. So unless you're, you're actively seeking opportunities to build the strength, so probably chin up, pull up, yeah, chin pull up would be the most specific, yeah. then you're going to have atrophy. I've lost three kilos, and I don't think it's from fat. I think it's from muscle, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, since since the pool's closed, because I'm not I'm not trying to look at my gut. It's it's <laughs> yeah, I mean. No, I wasn't, but now, now I am. Uh, but it's always the same. You go back and you go back and first couple of swims. I feel good for 500 meters, and then my arms mm. are stuffed. Because I've lost the, the conditioning, not the conditioning, I've lost the strength. Yeah, I get about 200 in my first swim back, so... <laughs> yeah, you're trying to hold one ten. <laughs> but the, the point being that uh, you know, paddles at the best of times are, are questionable unless you're using them for shorter distances for the purposes of strength building. But if you're going to go from doing essentially minimal for three months to then now all of a sudden getting back in the pool and you're adding the extra resistance of, of using paddles, it's a recipe for disaster, whether that be poor technique or whether that be, be injury. Um, so 
That's the thing, overloading the resistance too quick that it's like anything. You overload your, I think we talked about it before, with your, like you go and do a 45 minute run, your longest run you've done, and then all of a sudden you decide to go out and do a half marathon the next weekend. Like, you're probably going to put yourself at a bit of a risk of doing something injury wise. It's the same as if you go and all of a sudden just add all this big resistance onto onto your shoulder and your arm, regardless of you, if your technique's good or not. Like, if your technique's still solid, but you just add all this resistance, like, it's still going to put some damage through through your shoulder and then if you're someone who's like who really wants to get back in the pool you're getting back in three times a week straight away and you're doing that each session you're going to be pretty cooked by not a very long time frame it's going to your shoulder's going to blow out something bad is going to happen as a result I think, I think the key is with it getting back into swimming is, is if if you've previously done paddles that's fine let's say you do a set where you do 10 50s with mm. a, a minute rest something like that. That's, that that's a reasonable set to do with paddles well don't just jump straight back into that you're probably better off doing maybe 10 25s have half the half the on time same recovery mm. um but you don't want to be using paddles whilst you're fatigued and on that as well if you're doing it in it let's, you might be doing a, a two or three or five k set in the pool if, if that's you know if you're a really really good swimmer and that's and that's your thing that's fine but I guess the timing of using paddles as well is it really needs to be at the beginning of the session. Do your warm up, and whilst you're still fresh from a muscular perspective, uh, do your quality work, do your paddles, and then do your, your sub max stuff after that in order of your conditioning. So um, I think the real key message is paddles are okay when used correctly, um, but don't don't use them for. Do you see any benefit using two k straight? No, no, <laughs> no. I don't know. It, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense, does it? I don't, and I don't think they're. I don't think they're. I actually don't think that they're necessary. I do use them, so don't like I'm. I'm don't be hypocrite. I do use them, but for flat out efforts. I don't think they're necessary. Even in in that situation, you could simply aim to swim the same time with less strokes, and you're going to get the, yep. the virtually the exact same adaptations, right? Except you're possibly going to get it. You're also going to have to improve your technique in that same time. So, if you want to move more water per stroke without the paddles the only way you can do that is by gr effectively grabbing and transferring more water so i like it's challenging enough i know i could i could drop maybe three or four strokes in a length at will like to do it but it's very hard yeah, i get the exact same feelings that i would from putting paddles on by doing it that way so it takes yeah. a bit more discipline because you have to control it but like i don't they're not actually i don't think they're actually necessary um if you're not swimming faster like we said, you're not putting out more power. You might be putting out, you might have greater force on the water, but a slower stroke rate, which is probably not ideal. We don't, typically we don't want to slow down people's stroke rates. That's, yeah. that's not something that needs no. to happen. Um, so yeah, I, I think you, you could use them. The thing that really gets me is that if you, uh, if, you're, if you have a coach or someone's coaching you and you're getting sets with lots of paddles, you can let us know. Do you, we, do you know why you're using the paddles? Like, or do you yeah. just see four or five hundreds with paddles? Like, how, what is the reason behind the session with the paddles? Right now, it, the, you're probably going to get told it's to build strength, which 2Ks is going to take 30 minutes. Like, if you, I don't know any other, maybe on the bike, but any other time you're going to try 30 minutes of strength work is, is not really a thing. And maybe it is to help with feel on the water, which is a, something you can do. You get that feel of what it's like to pull the water. Again, you don't need to do that for 2Ks. You do that for a little there. bit just to sort of learn that. Then you want to try and replicate that without the paddle. So that's a really big one is, do you know what your, yeah. what the aim is, what yeah. you're supposed to be getting out of it? Why is that written into your program? Or is it just, I did, I did two 500s. I'm going to do a 500 swim, then I'm going to do a 500 with paddles. I'm going to do a 500 with paddles and band. Then I'm going to do a 500 with paddles, a band, snorkel, paddles, fins. sand, fins, <laughs> kickboard. Yeah. Just like cos. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I think a lot of the reasons people... Look, I think, I'm even speaking from experience. I think, I think a lot of the reasons coaches would put paddles in there is a variety thing. Same with using a pool boy or whatever. It's just to create some variety. Mm. But don't do it at the cost of poor technique and suboptimal adaptation. No, no, for 2Ks. Do it yeah. for, for 25. <clears throat> do it for 50s. Get plenty of rest, and, and that that's perfectly fine. I think it's uh, it's it's a uh, it varies a session. It's a little bit more enjoyable. But I think my pet my pet hate is saying to build strength, and you're doing an endurance set. Like strength and endurance are literally polar opposites. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter yeah. when people talk about strength and endurance. Like mm. is it strength or is it endurance? You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of those ones. Just 
I think it's it's ingrained that that it's a good thing to do. But again, think about it. You, you, your limitation for doing two Ks is not going to be your strength. Like you can go and do a fifty or a hundred or a two hundred with or without paddles a lot quicker. I hold that that pace than you can do two Ks continuously. And so it's just like on the bike. You can go do a do a one minute effort holding six hundred watts. Well, you can't hold six hundred watts for. Three, hours. three, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Twenty minutes, an hour, whatever it is. It's the same with the with the paddles. You put it on. You might be able to get more power output initially, maybe, Some if you if you've got a good technique long. and you're pretty strong. But you're only going to hold that for a minute or two minutes or maybe three minutes. You do longer than that, and it's not worth it. And, and all that as well. A triathlete traditionally, a, you know, swimming is the, the weaker leg, not always, but but traditionally. And what's the first thing you notice with somebody who doesn't have adequate arm strength? For me, it's that they're exiting at their hip rather than doing a full. A full extension so you put paddles on and you're gonna you know you, you probably won't even reach out all the way because it's too hard it's too and then, then you get to your, your hip and you're out again anyway so you're doing maybe two-thirds of a full stroke whereas you take the paddles off and just focus on really long strokes getting it out in front of you and exiting at a, at a close enough to a full extension at the back yeah that or you or you slip in through the water is that other one it's like you put the paddles on they go oh well this is too hard and i'm getting a short stroke and i've identified that but then they just start slipping through the water, take the paddles off, and now you're swimming like this yeah. as opposed to that. And the other thing I see a lot, um, and I don't, I, I'm often talking about just things I'm witnessing in the pool, so I don't know these people, but yeah, yeah. entry is like, maybe, I don't know if these people have good entry normally, but to, you can really easily turn your entry crap by putting paddles on, yeah. and you start to like knife that paddle in to get it into the water easily, and that, that, Entry is so, so important in getting that that um, hold of the water. As soon as you're knifing through, it's going to be so hard to then get that. Whereas if you have a nice, normal entry where you, as soon as you're in, you're starting to get that pressure through there to pull on the water. And again, if you do this for too long and you're doing this because you've got paddles on and then you take your paddles off and you're now swimming like this, you've just lost a big part of your catch. So they're, they're, they have their place, and they're, but they're, I think they can be very misused and they can be quite... Uh, dangerous for lack of a better word to your, your overall swimming um, yeah, I just you should be going faster that's yeah. really if you're not going yeah. faster with your paddles on than what you would be doing take your paddles off same with fins I reckon I say that all the yeah. time you jump in the pool and someone, someone's wearing fins and you end up swimming past them and you're not wearing fins and it kind of just doesn't make sense it's like well what's the point of chucking them on if you're yeah. just going to swim the same speed that's probably a topic for another day yeah <laughs> I was gonna say, we can go to snorkels we can go on the yeah, whole don't, don't use toys as a way of um, trying to cover up your weaknesses. Yeah. Use it as yeah. a way to enhance your strengths or enhance your weaknesses, whatever it is. Don't just chuck on paddles because it's you go a little bit faster. We're supposed if to be yeah, poor. They're, don't they're, put they're on classed, fins. As, classed as training aids. That's, yeah. what, that's what they're. I guess all bunched, bunched as. So if it's not aiding your swimming, then it's not. Yeah. It's not doing anything for you. But I think in I think in summary today we can probably wrap it up. It is is. Paddles have a place, but unless you're a very strong swimmer consistently, which most people haven't been in the last three months because pools are being shut, um, you use paddles, but use them sparingly. Focus them on the strength aspect as opposed to using them for strength endurance or endurance or whatever you want to call it. Um, the key is that your technique is is maintained. The quality of your technique is maintained throughout. Um, I think in a lot of circumstances, people would benefit just from trying to get a full stroke, a proper entry and an exit right out of, of you know, full elbow extension. Um, if you do that properly for even 50 or 100 metres, your arms are going to be pretty tired just doing that. Mm. Which is a good sign. Which is a good yeah. sign. So what we spoke last time is now's the time to do that and then stop, rest, do it again, not go, I'm tired yeah. and let it all fall apart. Yeah, so just, just, just use the analogy if you bedridden for three months you wouldn't just go straight back into to running you do some strengthening work work first so start with uh just a normal stroke focusing on your technique overload it into maybe some paddles but again 25 50 meters maybe eventually up to 100 um but if you're going to use them again just make sure you know why you're doing it make sure your technique is maintained and if you're not going faster then it's a sign that uh, you're probably cheating somewhere along the line um anything about? no i don't think so no. I think that's pretty good to wrap up. Any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, uh, we'll speak you to speak to you on the next episode. Bye for now.